I think the issue is that the public needs to be kept safe when you have somebody who has been a convicted terrorist where the judge in his original case said that uh, they, he thought he was so uh, much at risk that there should be uh, what was called an IPP. It was a, um, a sentence that meant that you could prevent someone's release, someone's future release, if they continued to pose a threat to the public. When that was removed, when that IPP was removed, well, what further provision was put in place to make sure that there could be a proper assessment done uh, to look at what uh, further danger someone might propose, and also whether things like um, TPIMs, they used to be called control orders, uh, they're another provision that can be used, another power that can be used to restrict somebody's movements or to have additional checks and, and safeguards and monitoring in place. So we need to make sure that all of those sorts of powers are being fully used and also that uh, a proper assessments are being done, uh, proper action is being taken to, um, uh, to, to make sure there is de-radicalisation programmes in these circumstances as well. So, look, in terms of this individual case, there will need to be a full investigation in due course, but there are some immediate issues that will also need to be looked at as to whether they apply to any other cases as well. Can you counter against things like this? After all, we're hearing today that he was abiding by uh, what we hear are very strict licence conditions. And that's why I think all of that will be part of, I'm sure, the, the full investigation that will need to take place in due course, which will look at whether those licence conditions were appropriate and, and whether they weren't. But I think there's, a, there's just a wider question about what assessments take place in cases where there used to be the indeterminate sentences, those no longer apply, what uh, security assessments, what risk assessments are done in those cases. Those uh, IPPs, they're Imprisonment for Public Protection, aren't they? That's what it stands for. They were, they were abolished in 2012. Yet uh, uh, today the Home Secretary is accusing Labour of, uh, bl in, in effect, blaming Labour for legislation brought in uh, in 2008 meant that, uh, as Priti Patel said, dangerous terrorists had to automatically be released after half their sentence. And this is clearly uh, what happened here. Well, obviously, in 2008, those IPP case, those IPP sentences were still available, and one of those was initially used in, in this case. But, uh, look, I think these are questions for all governments, and these will be questions for a future investigation to look at, uh, and that will have to be looked at in due course. I think the immediate issue is simply what is the government doing now to ensure what are obviously the, uh, the police and probation services and security services doing now to make sure sure that any other cases are looked at. I'm sure that the police and security services will be taking this all immensely seriously, but I think those are the things uh, that uh, we will need the reassurance that they are looking at now. But in terms of this individual case, I think, you know, we should not lose sight of the fact that this has been a very strong response, both from the police and from the public supporting the police.